All right. So I'm Laura Sifrabeen. I'm the Medical Outreach Director for Desanio. Thanks for coming. We're going to talk about respiratory syncytial virus tonight, or RSV. Just a little disclaimer that this information in the webinar or on our website is just for information and is not medical advice. So for any specific medical advice for your child, make sure you check with your child's doctors or healthcare providers. So I am a general pediatrician. I was in practice for about 25 years, and I am also the mother of three kids. And um, the baby in the picture is my son, Christopher, when he was born. And then he's 31 now. And my daughter, Jessica, is 27. She's an occupational therapist. And my son, Nick, is 25, and he's a third year medical student. So, I, you know, I think having a sibling with Down syndrome was really good for both of them. And my kids are all really close. So, and out of all of them, Nicholas, the tall one had RSV when he was a baby and still has asthma. So, you know, you never know which one's gonna get the bad RSV. So respiratory syncytial virus is a really common virus. Almost everybody has it by the time they're two years old, but it's the leading cause of hospitalization in children under five. and newborns and infants get it especially bad. So the goal is to like try to protect them, especially the first RSV season. It starts just like a cold, runny nose, cough, maybe a fever. And for some kids, that's all they get. And then it goes away and no big deal. It is very contagious and, uh, you know, siblings, cousins, kids at daycare, you know, family visitors, it's really contagious. And it's spread through the hands also. So hand washing is even more important than like COVID. It turned out to be not quite that important, but flu and RSV hand washing is really important. Babies born prematurely or with significant congenital heart disease are at increased risk of a severe infection. And babies with Down syndrome who are born um, full term and without heart disease are also at increased risk. So when it's a, just a cold, we call that an upper respiratory tract infection. That's when it's just in the nose and the throat and drippy nose. When it gets down into the lungs, which is what we call the lower respiratory tract, that's when we get um, concerned it's a more severe infection and we call that bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis doesn't mean necessarily it's RSV. It can also be influenza or COVID or some of the other viruses, but commonly RSV is a very um, predominant cause of bronchiolitis. And we know it turns into bronchiolitis when it's getting, um, seems more serious. There's a lot of coughing, a lot of bad coughing, can be wheezing, um, breathing fast, difficulty drinking because it's hard with a stuffy nose and a cough, it's hard to suck on the bottle or the breast or, um, the sippy cup at the same time as you're breathing. So we watch out for dehydration. Signs of difficulty breathing that you would wanna be watching out for are breathing fast. Um, usually 60 times a minute or more is very fast, but not that you need to count, but you would know, you keep a lookout, like watch the baby's breathing when the baby is healthy. And if it seems to be breathing, faster, that would be something to be concerned about. If the baby's pulling in around the ribs or the tummy or around the or around the collarbone and you really see the skin sucking in or sinking in with breathing, that would be a concern. If there's flaring of the nose, the nostrils kind of move in and out, or if there's a like a distinctive grunting sound that your baby doesn't normally make that they're making with each breath, those would um, all be reasons to call the pediatrician. You know, other concerning signs are some, if there's pausing in the breathing or apnea, sometimes the babies aren't even having trouble breathing, but they kind of just forget to breathe. So if it seems like there's a long time in between breaths, that's, that would be something concerning. Um, some babies, their oxygen gets low and they, look what we call cyanotic, which is like a blue or grayish color to the skin that might be noticeable in the fingers or the or the lips. 
So that's something to keep an eye out for. Again, difficulty drinking, and if there's not as many wet diapers as normal, all these would also be signs of things to call your pediatrician about. So this is a video, let me see if I can make it play. It played earlier from the American Academy of Pediatrics. So fast breathing, a grunting noise, which I couldn't make the sound come out. This is what we're calling the retractions, the pulling in um, on the skin. And then if there's a grayish or bluish tinge to the, to the, to the skin. In terms of treatment, there is no specific medical treatment for RSV. There's no antiviral or anything like um, that will make it go away. At, at home, your doctor might tell you to try saline nose drops, a cool mist humidifier, smaller, more frequent feedings to try to keep the, getting the fluids in but not tire the baby out. In the hospital, treatment can include oxygen. If the baby's pulse ox gets low, that's, you know, that they put it on the finger and we like it to be 94 or above. And if it starts getting lower, then, some, then the baby might need oxygen. IV fluids, if the baby's not able to drink. And if the baby's having a lot of trouble breathing, some babies need to be intubated and put on the ventilator. The intubation is the, it's the tube through the mouth that goes into the lungs, attaches to the machine, the ventilator that breathes for the baby. So since there's not a, a lot of great treatments, prevention is where we wanna focus our efforts. So we really wanna to try to prevent exposure to illness, especially for infants and newborns. And as you know, we're already starting to see an uptick in RSV. Um, so especially in the Southern states. So it's not too early to really be cautious. And even if visitors are healthy, if, visitor, if anybody's sick, definitely keep them away from the baby. But even if they're healthy, um, always make them wash their hands. And I would consider masking um, definitely with um, an infant or somebody who has heart disease or somebody who was born prematurely. It's really not that hard to do for a limited time when visitors or in your house and it can make a big difference. And then always keep the babies away from cigarette smoke because that can really affect their breathing also. In terms of um, medical prevention, we're very lucky that there are new products out now. Now, I, from what I hear, it, the, the rollout and the implementation might be a little bit rocky this year because all the billing and coding and distributing and how do you actually give this product the first year can be a little tricky, but that's not a reason not to ask your um, pediatrician about it because they're going to be the ones who know how you can get it. So the first type of um, prevention is a Brisevo, and that's actually uh, immunization for pregnant women. So you can find out more about it at this link or at this QR code. Can you guys see the QR code? Yes. Okay, on my screen, my picture is blocking it. So um, if you shine your camera at that, it will take you right to the CDC website and um, it would tell about that. So this is given during pregnancy at 32 to 36 weeks gestation if the baby will be born during the RSV season. So then the mom makes the antibodies against RSV and then those pass to the baby and protect the baby against RSV for, you know, for about five months. Now, it takes time to make those antibodies and it's not really till the end of the pregnancy that antibodies cross from the mom into the baby. So there has to be at least two weeks after the immunization in the mom before the baby is delivered for this to count as like an effective um, prevention strategy. So if the mom gets the vaccine and then delivers two days later, that wasn't really enough time. And then, then another option would be considered. And in so far, the, the studies have shown it reduces the baby's risk of being hospitalized from RSV by about 57% in the first six months. 
So these things don't mean that the baby will not get RSV, but it um, decreases the risk of hospitalization. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. So the other new product is Nersevimab or Bay Fortis. And this is, um, can be found information at the QR code, which is the, takes you to the same site as this link on the um, CDC websites. So this is not a vaccine in the classic sense. This is a monoclonal antibody. So this is, um, this is already the antibody against the RSV virus given in one shot at the beginning of RSV season um, that, that will um, help protect the baby th through the whole, um, the whole RSV season. Um, it, it's recommended for all infants younger than eight months of age in their first RSV season. Um, and for newborns, the, the goal is to try to get the dose within a week of birth either in the hospital or as an outpatient. Some children are recommended to get um, this during the second RSV season, such as children who were born prematurely and have chronic lung disease, children who are immunocompromised, or children with cystic fibrosis, or American Indian and Alaskan Native children. There's been some discussion about trying to get children with Down syndrome covered for the second season, but right now that is not in the guidelines, but it I have heard it discussed in different circles. So that might be something that happens eventually. So this is more information about the RSV um, protective antibodies also from the CDC website. An older product that's been around since about 1998 is Synergis or Pelavizumab. It is also a monoclonal antibody, but it, it has to be given monthly. So you either have to go into the doctor's office every month or a nurse comes to your house to give it. And it has it's a more expensive product and it has stricter criteria. So it was recommended, it's still recommended for people born before 29 weeks of gestation. Um, and who are less than one year at the beginning of RSV season. Um, for infants born at less than 32 weeks with chronic lung disease or infants with significant congenital heart disease. And there's more information at the links and um, this QR code. Now, from, from what I'm reading is most babies would only get one of these options, most babies, but there could be some cases where um, you know, somebody might start with Synergis and then get the other one, or some babies might qualify for the monoclonal antibody, even if their mom got the vaccine. And that would be decided on a case by case basis with um, a baby's pediatrician or healthcare providers, depending on their, um, their individual risk. You know, RSV is not the only infection out there. As we all know, influenza has um, started in the Southern hemisphere. And I guess Australia is having a bad influenza season and that kind of predicts how it starts in the Southern hemisphere and that comes up. So that might be a sign that this is gonna be a worse um, influenza season. So that's something to keep an eye on. COVID, there has been a little uptick lately um, it seems to be coming down a bit, but there's, you know, we don't know what's going to happen if there's a new mutation. And then pneumonia, people at, with um, Down syndrome are more at risk for pneumonia. So that's always something to keep an eye on and sometimes can happen on top of a viral infection. It's kind of like an ear infection. You know, once the mucus gets trapped in the ears or in the lungs and it's not getting cleared, then sometimes bacteria can grow on top of a virus and then you know the baby um, would get sick. So there are vaccines for all these illnesses. The pneumonia vaccine is the Prevnar that all babies get at um, in their in their infancy. And then the COVID and influenza vaccines are um, are are available now. 
I thought this was a nice chart. This is not just for babies, but it explains the different options for the fall vaccine. So influenza targets four strains of seasonal flu because there's many strains of flu. You can get um, the flu more than one time a year and you can get, there's many strains of RSV. So a baby can get RSV more than one time a year. So just having RSV doesn't mean like you don't need to get um, other preventive strategies then. So the influenza vaccine is available for um, six, six months and older, and it should be available now. The COVID vaccine is also for um, babies, people six months and older. Um, the RSV, there is a formulation for older adults who are age 60 and older. And again, some older adults with Down syndrome get, are, severe RSV infections, but they're still holding with that 60 years as of now. And then the the RSV vaccine that one can get during pregnancy, and then the RSV monoclonal antibodies. So, and this QR code, these are um, epidemiologists, and they put out a blog and a newsletter once a week, a couple times a week that talks about how how prevalent the different viruses are in the community and their takes on things and their suggestions. So I just started getting that a uh, few weeks ago and it um, it was it's helpful because it's like, okay, the COVID was, there was a little uptick, but now we're coming back down, but now influenza is starting. So it can help you um, kind of keep track on things. And then, but as we get, you know, in November, December, definitely, that's when a lot of viruses hit and you want to start being more careful. Okay, let's see. I have some resources. So healthychildren.org is a website run through the American Academy of Pediatrics and they have a section on RSV and it's in English. And then the second link is it in Spanish. So that's very helpful. And then there's also, a uh, a podcast for um, from the AAP. It was for clinicians, but it's very good for families too. So I'll send out the slides and um, you'll have all these links. Up to date is another website that has very good information and it has patient information. And then the second resource on this page is an article. Like if you wanted to really read a deeper dive onto Down syndrome and RSV infection, you can find a whole article at this second link. Okay. 